The Dark Presence is one of my favorite kinds of villains because mystery is central to its character. And it's not a mystery that you can ever totally solve. It's the kind of mystery that you can guess at, theorize about, exhaustively assemble all the available evidence and still only arrive at an incomplete picture. But it's the mystery itself that makes it so compelling. By the end of Alan Wake, the player will still not know very much about the Dark Presence we have been battling the entire game. We don't know its true form or if it actually has any form at all. We know nothing about its origin, its history, where it came from, whether it came from anywhere. We don't know its nature. We don't know what sort of life form it is or if it can even accurately be labeled as a living being. We don't know its true motivations, its goals, what it really wants. All we know about the Dark Presence are its actions, which are manipulative, violent, and deadly. And we know the effects of its influence, which are malign, disturbing, and horrific. But before we really dig into how the Dark Presence's character was crafted, we need to talk about the Dark Place. It's important to make clear that within the story of Alan Wake, the Dark Place and the Dark Presence are two very different things. The Dark Place is a place, a location, somewhere you can go. The Dark Presence is an entity which currently inhabits the Dark Place and is using the power of the Dark Place to further its own mysterious ends. It is not clear what the true connection between between the Dark Place and the Dark Presence is, or if there is any meaningful connection at all. The Dark Place could be the Dark Presence's place of birth, its origin, its home, its natural environment. The Dark Presence could also be an accidental creation of the poet Thomas Zane, formed by a mixture of an artist's passionate imagination and the generative powers of the Dark Place. Or it could be none of those things. The Dark Presence may have originated elsewhere, may have discovered the Dark Place and its power entirely by accident, may have been trapped inside the Dark Place only relatively recently. We simply do not have answers to any of these questions, and that's an intentional choice by the writers. Alan Wake is weird fiction, a genre I've discussed a lot on this channel. And one of the key themes of weird fiction is unknowability, which thematically reflects all the unanswerable questions within our own lives. But moving on, what exactly is the dark place? Okay, so nestled in the cold mountains and pine forests of the Pacific Northwest state of Washington, there is a small, rural, former mining town called Bright Falls. A seemingly cheerful and traditional American small town, but beneath that cheerful face lie dark secrets because Bright Falls is also the focal point of a series of strange events, unexplainable phenomena, and mysterious disappearances. Near Bright Falls there lies Cauldron Lake, one of the deepest lakes on planet Earth thousands of feet deep. This is a caldera lake, a sinkhole lake formed by volcanic eruption and collapse. Somewhere down in the murky, uncharted, lightless depths of Cauldron Lake exists an entrance to the Dark Place, a chaotic and primordial layer of reality that exists just beneath our own, an impossible place where the physical fabric of reality is not settled and stable the way it is in ours, a place where true spontaneous creation is still possible. How did this entrance come to rest at the bottom of Cauldron Lake? How was it opened? Who opened it? Where did it come from? How and when was the dark place formed? Has it always been there, waiting for us? Is it a gift from God or a curse from the devil? Once again, these are questions without answers, part of the mystery of the story of Alan Wake. The two DLC chapters of the first game are set entirely within the Dark Place, and that's where I'm drawing most of my information from. The Dark Place is a chaotic, confusing, and constantly changing setting, where people and objects spontaneously emerge into existence, and then just as quickly vanish into nothingness again, where the entire landscape and everything in it are subject to dramatic change at any moment, where even the laws of physics, gravity, and reality are malleable, can be altered by a mere whim. The character Alan Wake describes the Dark Place as conceptual and subjective, meaning it is based on abstract ideas, thoughts, and beliefs.
beliefs, that its reality is defined by the subjective perspective of whoever happens to be perceiving it. The Dark Place is infinite in size, larger than our entire universe. It's actually possible that what we think of as reality is merely a single, semi-stable thread dangling from the underbelly of the Dark Place. That the Dark Place is the true reality, the true state of the universe, or multiverse, or whatever this whole thing is. At its essence, the Dark Place is a setting of creation, where literally anything, any fictional character, any abstract idea, any thought can become real. The Dark Place influences our reality. Things conceived within the Dark Place can become real in our world. One big example of the Dark Place's miraculous conception is the entirety of the plot of Alan Wake and the character Alan Wake himself. Basically, the entire story of Alan Wake, everything that happens to this character, his entire journey, every enemy he faces, every obstacle, even his ultimate success is created within the Dark Place first, then later willed into reality by its power and actually written into existence by Alan Wake himself. Anyone's thoughts can influence the chaotic powers of creation within the Dark Place, and thus influence our reality. But artists, writers, musicians, people who are already creators themselves, who are already experienced at creating some version of a new reality out of their own heads, whether that be on the surface of a blank canvas or on the surface of a blank page, people who are already deeply in touch with their imagination. These artistic creators appear to have a far stronger influence on the Dark Place than others, which is why someone like Alan Wake, who is not just a professional fiction writer, but a prolific and successful one, is able to create so very much using the power of the Dark Place. But let's move away from a description of the Dark Place, which is intentionally mysterious and confusing, and instead examine its role in the story, which is actually very easy to understand. The Dark Place is, within this story, very simply, the source of everything supernatural that happens over the course of that story. Alan Wake is a game where a lot of really weird stuff happens. Most audiences are not going to be satisfied with that kind of story unless they are provided with an explanation. The Dark Place and its powers are defined just enough to satisfy that explanation, while being more than vague enough to allow basically anything to happen. No matter how weird the story gets, the writers can always just say, well, the Dark Place did it. The Dark Presence has a similarly simple role in the story. It is the the antagonist, the adversary, the villain, the obstacle to be overcome. It is evil, it is wrongness, distilled into its most basic and most violent form. In a lot of ways, its motivations and true nature don't actually matter to the story. All that matters is that it gives something for the protagonist to overcome and thus grow as a character to become a hero. But I'll discuss Alan's journey and his growth in much more detail in another video. As previously discussed, we know very little about the Dark Presence. Narratively, we know exactly as much about it as we need to know for for Alan Wake's personal journey to make sense, to have meaning. But with that said, let's still examine what we do know about the Dark Presence's background. The story of the Dark Presence begins with the story of Thomas Zane, either because Zane is the accidental creator of the Dark Presence, or because their disastrous interaction was the first recorded event in which the Dark Presence influenced our reality. Thomas Zane was a famous poet, or at least he was back in his original timeline. His entire life and everything he ever wrote has been erased in our own actually erased by him, but more on that later. In 1970, he visited Bright Falls and apparently discovered the reality-altering power of the Dark Place. He lived in the Bird Leg Cabin on Divers Island, an island in the middle of Cauldron Lake with his lover, Barbara Jagger, who he described as his muse. One day, Barbara drowned under mysterious circumstances in Cauldron Lake. Thomas Zane was heartbroken, but his assistant, a man named Emil Hartman, who serves as a minor antagonist in the story, convinced Zane to use the powers of the Dark Place to write Barbara Jagger back to life, which Zane subsequently did. Now, one of two things happened next. 
either Zane made some kind of mistake and in the rewriting of his dead lover, he accidentally wrote the dark presence to life underneath her skin, willed it into existence along with her, a broken soul inhabiting her new body. Or the dark presence already existed, had existed within the dark place all along. A malevolent intelligence waiting for an opportunity just like this one, changed it just enough to allow itself to hitch a ride into our reality, underneath Barbara Jagger's skin. Either way, the results were the same. The Dark Presence gained a physical presence within our reality, escaped from the Dark Place. We don't really know what happened next. We don't know what the Dark Presence did with its new physical body, what evil acts it may or may not have committed, because that entire timeline has been erased from existence, as if it never happened, as if the Dark Presence never escaped at all. Because, upon realizing his mistake, Thomas Zane used the power of the Dark Place again, this time to erase his own entire life, everything he had ever written, and everything he had ever done. He trapped both himself and the Dark Presence, still inhabiting his lover's body inside the Dark Place. But that's not all he wrote. As a contingency in case the Dark Presence ever escaped again, or perhaps as a sort of master plan to ultimately defeat the Dark Presence, Thomas Zane wrote a new human being into existence, a fictional character who would exist within our reality as a real living person, whose story would contain the key to finally sealing away the Dark Presence for good. And that person was, of course, Alan Wake, the titular protagonist of the game whose entire life, every choice he ever made, everything he ever wrote was almost certainly set into motion by Thomas Zane. But again, we'll discuss the complexities of this creation further in another video focused on Alan Wake's character. What matters for this video is that the Dark Presence was trapped inside the Dark Place by Thomas Zane, and it wanted out. Exactly why it wants out and what it will do if it ever does escape is unclear. But, judging by the limited influence it does have on our reality, the violence, the destruction, the death, the horror it wreaks, its escape would be pretty bad news for the entire world. The Dark Presence's plan of escape was very simple. Wait for another artist to show up in Bright Falls, then manipulate them into using the Dark Place's reality-altering powers to write itself a new escape route. The closest it ever came after Zane was with the 70s metal band, the Old Gods of Asgard, from whom it stole the Ravens which serve as a common enemy in the game, and who apparently used their music to seal the Dark Presence away again, sacrificing a piece of their sanity in the process. Emil Hartman, Thomas Zane's old assistant, is also attempting to use the Dark Place's reality-altering powers for his own greedy purposes. He is not in any way in league with the Dark Presence. He is simply greedy and selfish, and wants to use the Dark Place's power to benefit himself. Unfortunately for him, Hartman is an artist of both limited skill and limited imagination, so he cannot make use of the Dark Place himself. So instead, he became a therapist, opened an artist's retreat, which he uses to lure real artists to Bright Falls in the hopes that he can manipulate them into doing what he wants. But, unfortunately for both him and the entire world, the Dark Presence then uses these artists to continue altering reality in dark and deadly ways, which is the cause of all the strange events that occur in the vicinity of Bright Falls the unexplained phenomena and mysterious disappearances. None of these artists have the same level of artistic or imaginative power as Thomas Zane did, so none of them are able to alter reality enough for the Dark Presence to actually escape from the Dark Place. They can only change small things, carve ugly but ultimately non-existential fault lines in our reality, at least until the arrival of Alan Wake. And this is when we arrive at the start of the game's story. Popular supernatural thriller author Alan Wake, suffering from a long stint of writer's block, goes on vacation to Bright Falls in the hope that some rest and relaxation will help his writing. And deep, deep down in the depths of Cauldron Lake, writhing in its infinite cage, the Dark Presence stirs. It senses the arrival of an author with the creative power to write its escape into the world. But that author isn't going to do it willingly. He will have to be 
manipulated into doing it. And so the Dark Presence immediately sets a new plan in motion. From here, I would like us to watch a few cutscenes in the game together to examine how the Dark Presence is portrayed and developed. Here is its introduction. Hello? Mr. Stucky? Carl couldn't make it. Unfortunately, he was taken ill. But I have the key for you and instructions on how to get to the lake. Okay. I wish you a good stay in my cabin. I'll come by later to check how you've settled in. And to meet your wife. I insist. Thanks. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Very inspiring. This is a classic horror introduction. The mysterious woman in the dark, her face covered by a veil, appearing as if from nowhere, acting strangely. There's something immediately off about her behavior, her voice, her whole presence. Something is obviously wrong here. Everything about this introduction is meant to set off alarm bells in the player's head. Everyone who watches this cutscene already knows who the villain of this story is. Even if we don't yet understand its true nature, that this woman is merely a puppet for something much stranger and much worse. This is Barbara Jagger's body, empty of its original soul, possessed by the Dark Presence, contorted like a puppet to speak with the Dark Presence's voice. While the Dark Presence's true form is still trapped at the bottom of Cauldron Lake, it is able to reach out into our reality, wispy tendrils of ill influence, to subtly manipulate people into doing its bidding. Barbara Jagger's body here is one such tendril, which the Dark Presence is using to give Alan Wake a key to the island cabin, Thomas Zane's old home, an island that does not even exist anymore, that was written out of existence by Thomas Zane, but which the Dark Presence has briefly, using the creative power of the Dark Place, returned to our reality. Barbara Jagger's body is not an illusion, it actually does physically exist within our reality. It is even aging normally, her body has aged exactly as much as a biologically typical human body should in the last 30 to 40 odd years since Thomas Zane brought her back to life. She was much younger than this when she first died. But let's jump ahead to the moment when the Dark Presence seizes control of Alan Wake's destiny. He drives to the cabin on the lake, and after an argument with his wife, Alice, he storms outside. And then this scene plays. Alice? Alice! Alice! The cabin had gone dark. All the lights were out. Alice! Alice! Where are you? Help! Alice! I'm coming! It's all right! I'm coming! No! What Alan! the hell? Help me! Alice! No! Alice! Alice! Oh, no! <gasps> Keep going, Alice. <gasps> Wake up. Alice? Uh. Waking up in the crashed car felt like I had woken from one nightmare and entered another. I couldn't remember how I got there. All I knew was that something terrible had happened to Alice. What's happened here is that the Dark Presence has, essentially, kidnapped Alice, dragged her down into the Dark Place to use as a prisoner. When Alan dives into Cauldron Lake, he too becomes trapped in the Dark Place. There, the Dark Presence promises him that if he writes the correct story, he will be able to write his wife into freedom. But the Dark Presence edits that story, changes it, makes it darker, uglier, more violent, more supernatural, all in an attempt to escape. 
Realizing what's happening, Alan writes a new story, his own story, and that story is the one we experience in the game. From this moment on, everything we experience in the game is the story that Alan Wake wrote. It begins with a car crash, a lost memory, and a missing wife. It becomes a horrific journey through a rural town, chased by monsters, hunted by a supernatural being of tremendous power. And it ends with a sacrifice, with Wake choosing to trap himself in the dark place again, perhaps forever, in exchange for Alice's freedom. The Dark Presence's influence can be seen and felt every everywhere in this story. It is a physical presence here, violent, destructive, tearing trees up by their roots, throwing cards. It is also a manipulative presence. It seizes control of people, transforms them into violent shadows of themselves, broken puppets, madly repeating their old lines doing the Dark Presence's bidding, which is to stop Alan Wake, prevent him from completing the journey he wrote for himself, which will end with the Dark Presence being permanently lost in the chaotic depths of the Dark Place. It can be hard to tell which scenes are of Alan Wake's own making, violent obstacles he must overcome for this story to work properly, for it to have the excitement, drama, and sacrifice necessary to have true meaning. Because a character's really gotta go through hell if you want the audience to believe in in their growth. So, which scenes are his, and which scenes are a result of the Dark Presence's influence on the making of the story? Violent episodes it added to stop Alan from finishing his journey, to break his spirit. To finish this video, I want to watch just three more short scenes in the game, to see a little more of how the Dark Presence is being portrayed. Here's the first one. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. I know. See you soon. Have a great day. Hope you come back soon. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the old dear diner. Good girl. Welcome to, to, oh dear, Mr. Wake, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh, oh yes, yes, please come in. Hey, this is really good. Rose. Yes. My manuscript, I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah, uh, hey Al. Al, what's... Oh. Barry! What? What? In this scene, we see one of the Dark Presence's most powerful and most horrific abilities. Its power to control. It can seize your body, force you to say and do anything. But it's important to note that this manipulation usually only pushes you into doing things that you already wanted to do, at least a little bit. The waitress, Rose, already has a huge crush on Alan Wake. Normally, she would never even consider lying to him, drugging him, and bearing embarrassing herself this way, but under the Dark Presence's malodorous influence, all it takes is one evil touch to push her into acting out her most destructive fantasies. At its core, the Dark Presence is a manipulator. It doesn't usually break and stomp and smash to get what it wants. It only turns to violence when all other means have failed. It prefers the quiet approach. It prefers subtlety. It prefers to trick people into doing what it wants under the guise of giving those people what they want. If freed from its prison, I don't think the Dark Presence would immediately begin a reign of terror and destruction. Instead, I think it would keep behaving the way it always has. Lurking in the shadows, manipulating from afar, twisting people into becoming their worst selves. Alright, let's move on to the next scene. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. 
You must turn the lights on. Turn the light on. <gasps> Back to work, boy. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. On this TV screen, we're seeing the true Alan Wake. The Alan Wake trapped in the dark place, writing his story to free Alice. The story that the Dark Presence plans to use to escape into our reality. We don't actually see the Dark Presence in this scene, but we do hear Alan Wake describe its influence on his story. Under its influence, he writes more and more, faster and faster. And the story itself becomes more and more twisted. Instead of a heroic story about him rescuing his wife, it becomes a horror story. It's because of the dark presence that the video game, Alan Wake, the one we are playing, has all these horror influences. On his own, Alan would not have written it this way. He would not have filled it with so much darkness. However, I think the dark presence made a mistake here. It's actually because of the darkness in the story that Alan Wake is able to succeed in freeing his wife. I mentioned earlier that in order for a character's growth to be believable, in order for a character journey to be meaningful, you really have to put them through hell first. The American author Kurt Vonnegut once advised his students to be a sadist. No matter how sweet and innocent your leading characters are, make awful things happen to them in order that the reader may see what they're made of. Thanks to the Dark Presence's violent and horrific influence, we get to see what Alan is really made of, and he gets to grow. It's only because he's able to overcome those challenges that the Dark Presence throws at him that Alan is able to craft a story powerful enough, meaningful enough to actually overcome the Dark Presence. In this way, like so many other villains, through its own diabolical actions, the Dark Presence creates the circumstances that led to its own destruction. Destruction. I'd also like to mention here how much I appreciate the meta elements in Alan Wake's story. This is a story within a story within a story. Alan Wake himself is a fictional character within a fictional character, come to life within his own world. And he's even a fictional character who is obsessed with writing fiction. All of these meta elements allow the writers to spend a lot of time commenting on the storytelling process itself how supernatural thrillers are written, how and why certain tropes are used, what makes them exciting, appealing, how to imbue this kind of story with meaning. Alan Wake the video game itself serves as both an essay on and demonstration of what makes weird supernatural thrillers tick. It's really fun. All right, let's move on to the final scene that we're gonna examine in this video, which also happens to be one of the final scenes in the game. We're going to watch the defeat of the Dark Presence. Here it is. Hell! Baby, you were having a bad dream. It was just another nightmare. No. Everything's fine. You're home. It wasn't a dream. Everything's fine. Turn the lights on. Turn the lights on! Now you will never get her back. I am much. 
much older than you. Older than your first work of art. I will find a new face to wear. Ah, someone else to dream me free. Alan Wake dives back into Cauldron Lake, back into the dark place, this time on purpose, fully cognizant of the consequences of this choice. Inside the dark place, in a final desperate ploy, the dark presence attempts one last manipulation. It recreates Alan's apartment, wears Alice's face, but this manipulation is obvious, amateurish, easily penetrated. Against an opponent who understands its manipulative nature, its shallow tricks, the Dark Presence is nearly hopeless. In the final confrontation, the Dark Presence attempts to use Alan's fears, anxieties, and doubts against him, speaks to him in the voices of his friends and family, accuses him of being his worst self, but of course none of this works even if there is some truth to them. These are little more than petty insults spoken by a villain which knows the end has come. You even get to briefly hear the ways the Dark Presence attempted to manipulate Thomas Zane too, equally ineffective. When everyone already knows you're a liar, your lies lose whatever power they might once have had. The Dark Presence's final words are basically another version of, This isn't the last you'll see of me, I'll be back! And it could be right, Alan Wake 2 releases the same day as this video, and it's possible that the Dark Presence may return as an antagonist. After all, the Dark Presence is not dead. It can't die, because it was never alive. At least not in the sense that you or I are alive. The Dark Presence is not a biological creature. It is something else altogether, perhaps some shadow, that can never be fully erased from the dark corners of the universe. However, the Dark Presence is definitely gravely wounded here, rendered powerless and cast into the deep, turbulent chaos of the Dark Place's depths. If it is able to recover at all, it won't be for a long time. The Dark Presence is defeated by light in the same way that its lies and manipulations are defeated by truth. The Dark Presence was evil, vile, devious, manipulative, destructive, but it was also fascinating because it's not human. It is a life form with neither life nor form, something our language simply does not have an adequate word for. The Dark Presence is not a spirit, not a ghost, not a demon, but something else altogether. A question without an answer, a mystery without explanation. It's exactly these inexplicable qualities that make the Dark Presence such a fascinating villain, and I really hope the developers are able to craft a new antagonist that is just as weird for the sequel.